Okay. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Brendan Madden. I'm the CEO of Tom Sawyer Software in Berkeley, California. And I'm going to be giving a talk on uh, graph visualization and analysis technology. Um, a little bit of my background. Um, actually, I work in graph technology since 1985, um, almost 30 years. I uh, started doing um, network layout at, at IBM Watson Research Center and then um, built uh, graph-based <coughs> products even, even back then. And then I worked at uh, Santa Teresa Lab in 80 cycle drawing schema and query results. And so I, be, you know, so I built two uh, automatic layout systems, which were graph layout systems, uh, before starting Tom Sawyer Software in 92. Uh, so we were probably the first uh, American graph visualization company. Uh, and we're well known in the software industry. Um, so, and um, yeah, my background is in physics and applied physics, which is not a problem. Um, some of our, yeah, we're mostly, we're in the software uh, company space and we've been moving into the enterprise over time. So we have a, um, a, lot, of, a lot of clients. So I'll just uh, continue. We have, um, so we began with an ex, uh, experience in uh, graph-based data structures and then we, we were doing graph layout technology, which is taking the, the, the structural information and topological information and, and presenting the, calculating diagrams automatically. And uh, so first we began with graph layout problems and there's different domains like directed and flow oriented data, network oriented data, schematic oriented data, and, and each of them demands uh, different, uh, different directions in the layout technology. So we, we started with uh, layout technology um, and then you get into problems of nesting, nested drawings, labeled drawings, incremental drawings, you know, so dra drawings that change over time and you want to preserve the user's perspective. Then we moved into like visualization platforms which can be embedded into applications. So that was in the mid 90s. And then in the early two th 2000s we moved into graph analysis products. So, and graph analysis is about uh, clusters, traversals, pathfinding, uh, reachability, root cause, um, SNA, social network analysis and uh, network flow algorithms. So, um, so, yeah, we, so basically it went from layout to visualization to analysis. And, and uh, so what I'm going to be presenting, around the middle of the uh, 2000s, we started to generalize the problem. We said people have, they work with types of data. They want to know where the data is coming from. And they want to know the views of the data that they want. So we, we built a configurable platform, getting away from all the heavy API programming, moving towards configuration so people could build applications quickly and configure them and change them in the field, like in P, during POCs, doing uh, services engagements, and, and this kind of thing. So um, this is an example where we, we actually start, this is a commodity flow example where we originally started with uh, Excel-based data, just as a, we got the data set in Excel. And we, we opened, we opened the, we built an application that read, worked with Excel and the drawings would take, uh, you know, two or three minutes to come up because of uh, processing the Excel data sheets. Then we exported uh, from Excel in CSV format and then imported into Neo4j. And then it goes down to, you know, more or less being instantaneous. So, so what, what, what we have here is um, uh, with Tom Sawyer, you can define, we have integrator, uh, integrator definition and uh, view definition. Everything we do is, is rule driven and configuration driven. So you can write sophisticated rules to go, you know, you can have filters and you can have, uh, you know, rule driven views of data. So in this one, this was, um, we, we have uh, this, this uh, tree control drives uh, certain data, you know, like so we have the states in the United States and we have different commodity types. So I'm saying, well, maybe I'm interested in the auto industry. So I'm going to click on Michigan is probably interesting for, for auto. Ohio, maybe for tires and, you know, other manufacturing out of Ohio and maybe Texas. You know, they have a lot of factories in Texas. And then I might say, so I just, so I click the right buttons. Uh, I might, and in, in, in what commodities am I interested in? I could say, you know, I'm base metals, uh, different types of base metals, maybe electronic components. So what I'm doing here, under, underneath this, we have cipher queries. So we have a, 
you know, um, and, and Neo, we have a Neo Cypher data integration, and we can define, in our design technology, we can define queries and have, a, we can have more than one integrator. We have a federated integration. So for different aspects of a, an app, we can have multiple query definitions. And one might be the initial load, another one might be an incremental load. So we can do, we can do sequenced uh, data integration. So I'm gonna run a query now. Uh, where I'm, so I'm, I'm querying, so Tom Sawyer has um, multiple synchronized views of data. So here um, I've got, I, I've uh, selected the, the information, I, I've got the states showing up in a, in a data-driven uh, tree control. So I'm seeing the states here on the left, I can see the areas within the states uh, that are of interest where materials are, you know, manufactured. And similarly I can see, you know, the commodities. So Tom Sawyer has uh, tables, trees, diagrams or drawings, charts, maps, and property inspectors. And what we do is provide a synchronized, uh, model-driven uh, views of data. So if you, if you select on one view, it, it synchronizes and, so, and selects and, and focuses in on all the other views simultaneously. So here we have a data-driven chart view at the bottom. And I could see, okay, Ohio has a lot of imports in, you know, I think that's millions of, uh, you know, so it's millions, so a lot of imports, a lot of exports. Michigan, similarly, in auto parts, you know, an auto manufacturer, a lot of imports, a lot of exports, and similarly, Texas. So then you might say, well, I'm, that's nice. Um, maybe could you show it to me on a map? So I'll, maybe I'll show you a network on a map. It's a little bit, so. Here I'm showing data-driven uh, Google Maps views. So I'm, this is just going. And we also have a, an OpenStreetMap project where we'll, we'll be able to do it uh, if you don't want to have a public service access. So for instance, that's, that's uh, showing uh, that the, the commodity information flowing uh, on a map. And then here's one showing the uh, directed graph. It's a little bit light, but it's, it's a, a directed graph of all the commodity flows. Uh, you know, with labels that say how much, uh, you know, how much, how much money is flowing, you know, in, in commodity value. So, for instance, if I, if I were to say, okay, let me click in on Cleveland area, you know, I could see, uh, you see I have rotated labels automatically placed on a directed drawing there. And you could say, so for instance, then I, I so I did, if I came over here and I clicked on you know, uh, Cleveland, if I go over here to, you know, there I am synchronized, like I was saying, uh, on, on, on the other maps. So that's like going, you know, keep, keeping coordination between different views of information. And then you might say, so that's a directed uh, a flow oriented drawing, which might be in a dependency graph, a uh, supply chain, a logistical application, you know, any kind of a software engineering application would have flows. But then you might say, well, let me look at that differently. Uh, maybe I'd like uh, an orthogonal schematic representation of that. So now what you see, I mean, um, now what you see is a, uh, an orthogonal schematic with overlap-free labeling. So if I were to zoom in on a section of this, I can see, uh, if you see, what, what you have is, uh, precise clipping to the geometry of the, the defined uh, uh, graphical specification of the, of the images. You have uh, labels that are non-overlapping and you can, you know, navigate the drawing. Like I could, for instance, um, let's, let's do some link navigation around uh, this area of Texas. So I can like go around the links, like for instance, like that and say, oops. Sorry, so that maybe this link is of interest to me and it takes me to Houston. Or you might say, in a data-driven, could you maybe group, uh, show me this data again, but organized by state? How, uh, can you group it by state for me? So Tom Sawyer has, as I say, it's rule-driven. So rule-driven and data-driven uh, visualization. So here I'm gonna say group that by state. Um, and then I'm going to come in here and, for instance, uh, collapse it all down, do an incremental animated drawing of, of that schematic, and it's showing, it's showing the, the, the broad financial flows between the states. And you could say, well, that's nice. Now, uh, maybe you could say expand it all. 
Now I've got a nested, automatically laid out orthogonal schematic. But, and and I, what you're seeing is um, drawings that uh, I can read at any level of detail. You know, with not, you know, you don't see, you don't see edges on top of each other. You don't see, uh, you don't see labels overlapping labels. So you know, so we have labeling, routing, incremental drawing, and a full uh, dynamic navigation environment. So, um, uh, or I could say, for instance, I, I really want to, maybe I. So this is Texas, and I see a tooltip showing Texas. Now I say, maybe I'll just drill down into Texas. I only want to see the flows that are fully contained within Texas right now. And I can go up and down through. Uh, so, so there's a lot of need for hierarchy. Uh, you know, so, so graphs are wonderful, but you need to be able to do attribute-based grouping, nesting, and go up and down, like in data center projects and all sorts of uh, applications. You need a hierarchy, enterprise applications, enterprise architecture. You need to go up and down through this data. And it takes years and years to, <laughs> to do the, to, to do the, the layout, tech, the, 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 the visualization technology. So we can give people um, .NET, we have a full .NET architecture, a full Java architecture. And, and in both sides, you can go desktop or web. So we, we give people a configuration, and you do configuration of all your, um, your data. And then you, you, so I'll show another example. Uh, um, so this is uh, our Tom Sawyer Perspectives environment. So what, what we have is, uh, so we do a design preview, a round trip process. So, so we used to do it all, a, you know, we had many, many experience for many years where customers would write 10,000 lines of API code, like network management company, like a Cisco or some Israeli networking company would write 10,000 or 20,000 lines of Tom Sawyer code. And the patterns of integration that customers had was over and over, sim it was really how to, how to go from their data model to ours. And, you know, so they had to do all this configuration, defining the graphics, you know, ex extracting the entities, extracting the relationships, and then sending them into our views of data. So, so we, we, we built the all, we started to build all those pipelines back and forth. So, so it really became what kind of data, where's the data coming from, and the views. And what we decided to do was say, let's, Let's build that into a configuration environment. So here you see, um, we, this is like a network editing project. You have the idea of like schema. We, you, we have schema and schema rich or schema or schema less uh, capability. Uh, and you can see like several data integration sources. So I'm not going to worry about the data integration, but then I can have like what we call drawing templates, which give me uh, a way to visually define my graphics. So we have level of detail graphics. So as you zoom in and zoom out, you can show less or more detail as nodes zoom in and out or links as well. So these are examples of ways to see data-driven presentation. So for instance, here I'm saying host name in that data. Maybe I could change that to IP address for the title or some other property in my data model. And I'm saying in this application, I want three drawing views, two tree controls, two tables, an inspector, and some search. So, so for instance, you see like in a network map definition, you could say, well, people need, you know, just in my application, I want to say, what are my toolbars? What are my, what are my rules to generate that view of the data? So I have graph-based data. We, we, have the, we have both table data models and uh, we have upcoming uh, graph-based data models, which will go directly from, like from Neo right into, you know, schema, you know, direct loading from Neo into a data model, and then uh, rule-based uh, view generation. So if I was to just preview this, I get this is an intermediate preview step, but you see, so for instance, if I expand all, I, I could group uh, by location and by like type here. So, so for instance, if I do the layout on this, I, you know, I get like orthogonal animated schematic, maybe a, a directed graph, uh, I could synchronize, you know, in on, on particular properties, you know. So everywhere I view, you see all the views are dynamically keeping up to date. So this is just an example. So that's like the devices. And if I were, for instance, to zoom out, you see I'm, or, or zoom in, I'm going to show more information as I, you know, graphical. You could do multiple attributes that, that are all data driven and rule driven from data to graphics on, on, on your nodes and your links and your, you know, this kind of thing. And uh, so you see overviews, 
there are tight fit overviews that you can navigate around and uh, you know features like this. So you see a device table where um, I, can, I can say these are my entities I want to show or my nodes and then these are the attributes I want to show and for each attribute I have a renderer. I can define, uh, you know, so I can define toolbars, custom renderers, custom programming and everything. Um, so the idea is people take the result of this preview step and then they embed it into their larger, you know, so it's really, an, it's still an SDK. It's de designed to be integrated into, you know, corporate web apps or production software company products. So the idea is you, you, you can say I want to do a desktop, a desktop app or a, a web app. So for instance, you see this particular visual definition, you see this toolbars like save as image, print setup, print, you know, this kind of thing. So I could say in the designer, well, I don't really want save as image anymore. And I don't want I don't want print setup and I don't want preview. Just let me let me preview it again as an image map web application. So now you see the toolbars have just changed. So I didn't have so what we do, the output of this is an XML definition that so what that allows instead of us having to code that, we can define a configuration and 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 then it gets loaded when the app runs. So so what we do is we allow people to configure like really quickly without having to go back to IT to write code. So people can work that way. So that's an example of a network editor. Um, so I'd like to show, uh, so I have about, I'm doing okay for time. Um, so I'm gonna open a, a, like a, a network project. So I'm gonna say, maybe I want to look at uh, uh, social data, like companies and directors and officers. So it's an example of like a, you know, entity management or corporate governance kind of application or securities and exchange application. So here you see this one, we have company drawing and social network drawing and several tree controls and charts. And so if I was to just uh, uh, preview that, so it, I have a network representation of the directors and officer relations coming from the, the data source. And you know, you could see um, like that's a that's a symmetric layout. This is a what we call a circular, so it's a clustered, so we, we cluster and analyze the the the, the links between nodes and we, we do dynamic dynamic uh, very fast like ratio ratio cut partitioning and then we you know we do so you see we see we, we make a, a graph of clusters and then we also do uh, you know like a relaxed uh, spring embedding within the, within the particular clusters. So that's an example of a circular layout drawing. That's a sample of the same data uh, as this is a, so this is an example of the same data as a, a schematic representation. So this is really useful. And you, you, so you can see they're, they're very clean, you can follow. And you might say, well, gee, that's really nice. I've got uh, people and companies, but actually what's really important is really who knows who. Uh, you know, it's, it's fine. I care about the companies at some point of view, but maybe I care more about the, the, the people who know each other rather than their, who they work with today. So we have, we have um, rule-driven uh, view definition. So we can have particular properties in the data that we use, we write rules and we dynamically generate graphs which become the input to the, the drawing system. So for instance, I might say, well, I want to write a rule if I have people Maybe two people work for the same company or they're associated with the same company. That means just make a link between them and the data uh, in, in a graph structure. So that's what we would call a social network and then that's what that view. So that's the social network of that company network. So it's, it's a different, but that, see what's interesting is that social network was not in the data. It was not defined. But, but through the use of rules, we dynamically generated graphs. And then we could commit that stuff maybe back to Neo and then work, you know, work in a, you know, so we, we actually inferred graphs from, from data that didn't have that representation. So, so the rule-based rule and uh, data-driven approaches to generate graphs is very powerful and it's not, you know, a lot of times that the relationships are not explicit. They're, they're just in, they're just, you know, you have a co columns of data, maybe one column is manager ID, person's name and person ID and manager ID. So that's, and it, you might say, at, on this particular view I care about inferring, I can, I can just because on a data-driven manner infer that relationship. So then you might say, well that's nice, maybe that's too much information still. 
why don't I filter out all nodes of degree one? And so I'll go ahead and say, okay, just show me. And there are bi-directional links in between some of these. So if I go, show me everybody. So that'll filter out. So as I was saying, is all views are synchronized and all actions are model actions. So I'm, I'm setting a filter on the view, all the views. So that's why this view dynamically updated over here. And then I could say, well, let's incrementally lay that out. And it, it gives me a new clean representation. Now I'll go to the social network, which should be changed as well because I've filtered here. And that's what you'll see over here. Now there's much less data in the social network. I'll lay it out again. And then maybe I want to perform some analysis now on that uh, more, you know, so I cared only about people of higher connection. Now I might say, well, let's run some SNA uh, on this network. And you, so here's an example of, okay, that's like between the centrality. That's, so that's an example of an algorithm that says score people by the number of paths they are on uh, across all the paths in the network. So what you get, and then we defined a synchronized centrality view over here, and I get those people normalize between 0 and 100. So that's a rule-driven configured view sorted by their score. And I could say, well, that's, so that's Marshall. There's large, so now this would give me a way to do like a fraud detection or some law enforcement work or some intelligence work, whatever is of interest. You know, and uh, similarly, so uh, here's this Jerome. So there he. So that's a schematic. And you can say, oh, that's interesting. The orthogonal view gave me. Um, it's interesting. I have this little subgroup up here that is all connected to this um, this Jerome. So I, you know, it, it, it. Now I know I have some information that I, I should. Those are his pals. And uh, so then I maybe go back. Let's go back and see what companies. Now I, I go back to the other view, and I can look around that person and see. Well, who does that person really affiliated with? And so you can. It's really powerful to do uh, dynamic perspectives of you know multiple perspectives of view. So we, so what we you know we started with tables and trees, and drawings, and then we've we've you know and, and inspectors, and we've moved into charts and maps, and 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 it's so the what's nice is you. You can define these. You can define these applications just by, you know, in a, in a design environment, you just create views and write rules. So you can, and then, and then it's all bound into an XML file that then gets loaded in the in the web app that you're you're using. So, for instance, with yeah, that's a clustering on the data. If I was to say, what are the? This is another one like between start and finish. How many disjoint paths? That, like. Non-edge, uh, the edges are not reused. Uh, between, to show me all the paths between start and finish that where one edge or one relationship is not uh, reused. So if I run this, it tells me, oh, there are three paths between the start and the finish in an edge disjoint manner. That's relation. So if I said now the nodes can't be reused, and I ran it again, okay, well that node can that that node is forcing. Now you say there's only two paths because this this path can't be used because it's already taken up by the other path. So that's an example of, uh, or you might say, I need, uh, I'm doing some, why, did, why am I having a manufacturing problem? So root cause is another graph algorithm. You could say, I've got these effects in a network. Um, how do I, what, what might be the causes of those uh, event logs filling up? Or, you know, what, those, there was problems down the line. So, so I could run like root cause, and this tells me, oh, I have 14 nodes in that data set that I should investigate. So that gives people like an, a, a systematic way to go about, you know, working on a problem. And, uh, or you could say, you know, like in, um, you know, in like route finding applications, I need to show me, you know, between start and finish, uh, you know, and I have these costs and capacities on the nodes and links, or, you know, I could say, well, what, let me iterate the paths from shortest to longest would be an example. So it's like, what's the shortest way to walk you know, between two places? And you get three paths from Google. You know, so here, this one tells me there are 24 paths between start and finish. And I'm sorting them from shortest to longest. And so you can see I can iterate them, and they're getting longer you know, through the data. So, so we have a long, um, a long experience in graph analysis and this kind of thing. Um, yeah, thank you.